The Chicago White Sox select Zach Collins, a catcher from the University of Miami in Coral Gables, Florida. That was pick number 10 overall by the White Sox. And a big day for Zach Collins. A celebration on draft day. Jason Benetti, Steve Stone, joined by the Sox director of scouting, Nick Hostetler. Thanks for stopping by again. Absolutely, anytime. Hey, congratulations. What do you Thank think you. of the draft? We couldn't be happier. Uh, I, you know, I know it's not going to fall like this every year for us, but it felt perfect for us. Tell us about Zach Collins and what you think you have out of him from that 10 spot. Yeah, I, we were, uh, Zach was our number one target starting on April 1st. And, you know, I think we've got a guy, a middle of the order, left-handed, big power bat. Um, he controls the strike zone, uh, understands, uh, you know, what to swing at and what not to swing at. Uh, he takes good pitches. He looks good when he takes. Um, I, we have no question in our mind in that room that he can catch. Uh, we think he's going to be an everyday catcher for us behind the plate, middle of the order impact bat. He also had a couple of picks of 26 and 49. You took some hugely power arms. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Zach Birdie, the local local kid from Downers Grove. Uh, I live about an hour and a half from Louisville, so it was always great for me to get a chance to get home. Uh, but he, uh, he, he, Zach just has a big, big time arm. Just an unbelievable mentality and makeup as well. And I think that's the one thing that doesn't go is widely reported uh, like the stuff does. But his makeup, his aggressiveness, his coaches at, at Louisville just absolutely love him. Um, they, he's, he's got the uh, back end of the bullpen uh, mentality for sure. And everybody talks about Alec Hansen, and they always talk risk-reward with Hansen. The fact that he might have been the riskiest, riskiest, but he has maybe the highest ceiling. He does. It, there, is, there is a couple guys in our room that felt he was the best college pitcher in the draft. Really? Uh, the, the upside is, is just absolutely tremendous. I, I actually saw him pitch on Mother's Day. Uh, my wife wasn't exactly happy that I flew out and saw him, saw him pitch that day, but uh, he was outstanding that day. There's a potential uh, four pitch mix with him. He's six foot eight. Uh, he's got long arms and it is power stuff. Uh, I think if, if we can get this guy right, and I think we've got the guys to do it, um, the sky's the limit. How about the kid from Ball State? Yeah, Alex Call. Talk about another just tremendous makeup kid. It, and, and Alex Call is is kind of the epitome of what we tried to do uh, this year in this draft, and that is to add as many good baseball players as we possibly can. And, and we did that, and Alex Call is one of those. So what happens from now? I mean, you've got the guys that you targeted, and you're happy, like most scouting directors no are, question. that you've got some guys that maybe surprised you that they were still there. But now you're getting to the middle of the draft. And so when you look at that, what are you looking for exactly? Yeah, we're looking for guys with big, loud tools at this point. Um, something that jumps out at us, something that we think that he can hang his hat on as he progresses through our system. Uh, I think there's a few more of those type of guys on the board. We're trying to get those guys in order tonight, make calls to the advisors, find out uh, what the signability is, and having our area guys reach out to them, kind of checking the makeup as well. Does it help when you go to sign any of your young pitchers when you, number one, talk about the pitching philosophy of the organization, and number two, the fact that you guys bring young pitchers to the major leagues. I would think that would be a huge plus. There's no question. I can't tell you how much Don Cooper, Kurt Hassler, um, those guys mean um, and make it how easy they make my job at times. So there's there are agents and advisors out, out there that want their pitchers coming to us. They know that um, we have a great track record with them. We keep, we keep our guys healthy, the most uh, healthy organization in baseball in regards to pitching. And uh, those, those guys want, they want to pitch for us. How much stuff do you read and watch in the months leading up to the draft? <laughs> What's the volume of that like? Oh, man, I, can't, I don't know if I can even put a number on it. There are, you know, and the, I think the funny part is, is the stuff that gets sent to me. Um, you know, from different, whether it's our scouts, whether it's other people, sometimes my own, my own family, my dad sends me some stuff every now and then as well. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of volume. You try to kind of keep it all into context and understand what it is and who's reporting it and, and take it value for what it's worth. But uh, there's, there's a lot of information now. What is the number one characteristic that the scouts under you have to have to scout free agents because it's a different indoctrination than major league scouts. It is work ethic, number one, um, a passion for it. You know that passion and work ethic. If, if you if you have that 
and you understand that a ball a ball player is not going to walk across your living room floor. You got to be out <laughs> at the ballpark. You got to get out there. You got to see these guys. And and I and I I can't. I, I mean, I I would I, I would undersell how proud I am of our staff this year. Um, it, it, there were some new things I tried to do differently. Some some new uh, fresh ideas here or there. And and these guys, all the way from from Doug Lauman and his him you know molding me and helping me and training me and down through the rest of them these guys have just been outstanding this year what are you looking for tomorrow just in terms of is there a position that you like that you feel like there's a lot of depth on the board what, what are you looking for yeah i think there's still some pitching out there i i think there's some we've identified a few guys we want to target early on tomorrow um that may have been passed over so far and and we think we can you know, we can add, and they've been passed over for whatever reason, whether it be some mechanical stuff or uh, stuff. But uh, there's a few pitchers out there we'd like to get. Left center field, Eaton is over to make the catch for two outs. Because catchers are the premium. I mean, all catchers. You took one in the first round in Zach Collins, certainly. But not to be missed, the eighth pick, Nathan Nolan, another catcher. Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, plus, plus catch and throw guy. Handled a... Uh, a good staff at, at St. Mary's. They had also had a uh, guy, I think it was a fourth or fifth round pick on that staff, Corbin Burns. And um, Nate did a tremendous job of, of just handling the staff. The coaches there trust him. Uh, Adam Virtus, our area scout, just absolutely loved this kid. Um, had him as high as the second round. So when he was there, when we had the chance to get him, it was, it was a no-brainer for us. What's it like for you to see the reactions of the kids that you picked? It's special. I, you know, to, to sit here and think that you have some hand in helping a young man's dream come true, it's, you know, to say that it doesn't affect you or get you a little bit emotional would be a lie. It's something that I know I dreamed of as a kid, and, and I had to find a, a certain different path to get, get into a major league organization than some of these guys that were drafting. But it's pretty special to see the reactions of Zach Collins and uh, Jamison Fisher. And I got a, we got a text from him not too long ago. It just is thanking us, and it just it's special. It really means a lot. Couldn't you get a bigger guy in the first round, or a guy maybe with more power than Zach Collins? You know what? If we're gonna, it, the one thing I'll say, whether he makes it or he doesn't make it, if we get into a fight, he's gonna be the first one out of the dugout. He's there with you. <laughs> exactly. Two strikes on a Hosmer, and Abreu finishes the inning. Nick, thank you so much thank for all your insight. Nick, Congratulations. It. Thank you. Thank you. Nick Hosmer, so scouting director. 5-2 Sox tonight.